everybody, it is Dungeon Master Mark. So we're doing a quick uh, Ask a GM uh, question series here in the game room down in the dungeon or the nerd cave as my wife likes to call. Um, so the last couple of days I've had a bunch of different questions in uh, our Facebook group for the Dwarven Forge fan group and then a couple of the other um, groups and then a couple of private messages uh, via my YouTube channel in one really, really strange email, but we'll get to that maybe in a different video. So there's a bunch of different questions people had. Um, some of them were specifically like asking a GM for advice. Um, some of them were just kind of more gaming related questions, which I wrote some of the more popular ones now. Uh, the first one we're gonna get to is uh, if, if I was new to GMing and I had to choose between an FDM or an SLA or a resin printer, what would I choose? Um, so I don't know, I think this person um, didn't understand that a resin in SLA is technically the same thing. Um, SLA is just the basically the form of, of how the resin is used. It's basically created in, in layers, at, or I should say, as it goes down and it slowly goes back up. Um, I think they're both really, really great at different things. Um, I used to have an FDM printer. I had several. Some of you have probably seen some of the older YouTube videos, which if I get a moment, I'll try to put a link somewhere up. I think it's this side. Um, but FDM printers obviously really, really great for doing terrain, like if you want to do some of the dungeon prints, things like that, um, cavern pieces, towers, you know, er everything of that nature. Um, you can dial them in somewhat and do miniatures, but really and truly if you want high quality, really nice looking miniatures, you want to go for an SLA or what's also known as a resin printer. Um, I have an EPAX X1 resin printer. It's very, very nice. Um, it has auto leveling functions. Very, very high quality. Um, I can normally print like a bed full of, I think I can do about 10 humanoid 28 millimeter miniatures at a time. Generally it takes maybe three or four hours at the most and that's if I do fairly high detail. Uh, if you do the quicker detail or like bases, like I can do a whole bed of bases and. 45 minutes if I want to do some pretty cool custom bases. So um, definitely look at what it is you're wanting to build. Um, ideally, I would say you want both, but depending on what you want to build, I would go off base off that and then kind of extrapolate what's in your budget. Um, I also have any cubic, any cubic photon. I cannot talk this morning. I may have to drink some more of my coffee and tea. Um, any cubic photons is a little bit on the cheaper side. Um, very, very good for miniatures. It's a little slower than like the EPAX X1. So if speed's a priority, and if you're printing a whole lot of stuff, um, not, not as good. But for the, for the price and the value, very, very nice. Um, second most popular question. Do I have any odd items in my gaming collection? Um, this came a couple times from people who saw uh, pictures of some of my terrain, um, Jordan Forge stuff, minis. Um, I have a couple really, really like more rare items, stuff that is really hard to find, but I would say my favorite piece that is definitely oddball is actually this. This is the Lord of the Rings from the Fellowship of the Ring movie, um, and this was actually a Toys R Us exclusive. Um, and what makes this even more bizarre is my ex-mother-in-law bought this for me. Um, so she used to be a manager uh, at a Toys R Us that's local here in Cincinnati. And I believe my ex-wife, it's been so long, I mean, my son's 19 now. So I mean, it's been like 20 years before my son was born. Um, it wasn't, I think it was before he was born, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, she actually bought this for me for Christmas. This was uh, the way the stores worked. They only had, I think every store got like a certain number of these. And then they had one on display. So all of the, the stores sold out, and this was actually in like the, the plexiglass display. And they were gonna, I think just pitch it. So she took it for me, and I got this, and I actually wanted to buy one. So it's fairly hard to find. Um, I'm not sure how well you guys can see the detail. But like I said, they're definitely not, you know, 28 millimeter, obviously. But uh, it was pretty cool at the time. Like some of these guys, like some of these don't really even look like the characters, which is kind of hilarious. Definitely look off, but uh, this is probably one of my favorite oddball items in my collection. Um, I did have someone once, I think once I did took like a picture of it when I was cleaning out my game room, 
and someone offered me a significant hunk of change for it, but it has some sentimental value. The sad thing is, from my previous marriage, the thing I miss the most is ribbing Hank's mother while she was, she was pretty nice, pretty cool. I, I like her. She, was, uh, she paid better attention than my wife did, which is kind of sad. But yeah. So that's definitely one of my most odd items. Um, I have a lot of rare miniatures that I've collected over the years and I've been collecting now for uh, probably close to 30 years. <clears throat> but uh, really hard collecting for the last maybe 15. Um, let's see, next question. Um, the Colossal Red Miniature. A couple people asked me, um, why is it I have more than one? Um, which is a really good question. Uh, when my current wife and I first got together, um, I was living um, in a different home. Uh, it was actually the house that I lived in when my previous wife and I were, were married and we got divorced. And it was a really nasty divorce all this. I got to keep the house. I had custody of my son. It's a long story. Trust me, you don't want to hear about it. But uh, my current wife didn't want to live there, obviously, because, you know, it was like a starter house for me and my previous wife. So, which is understandable. I mean, I think any woman out there would probably feel the same way. So we packed up, you know, all of my stuff. We moved. And somehow, my colossal red dragon um, got lost in the move. Later, like 10, <laughs> 10 years later, my wife told me that that uh, she had, like, left it out and the dog had chewed on it. She didn't want to tell me, so she just threw it away. <laughs> I mean, I wish you would have told me, but I mean, literally for the first two years, we lived uh, in our next home, or this home. Uh, we had an occasion, we'd find like boxes of stuff. You know, when you move, you find boxes. Like, oh, we haven't unboxed this for two years, right? Every time I found a box, I would have to go through it. I'm like, I know it's here somewhere. I know it's here. I know it's here. So I literally could never find it. Um, finally, I, and then at the time, that was when the, the value of those were like sky high. Just couldn't find one. Uh, the ones I did find, people wanted, you know, like five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars. I'm, I'm not, I'm not paying that. Um, so finally, I found one. Someone had one without the breath weapon. Um, so I bought it. I got a pretty good deal on it. Um, and then, literally, like the day I bought it, someone posted one in our Facebook group, the RPG Sales Trade. Posted another one, still in the box. I'm like, well, you got to get it. And then I think it wasn't that long after that, someone had another one. Uh, it was like completely mint condition. And I picked it up and just put it in the back. And hopefully one day I can give that to my son or daughter. So. But it's really not a very practical miniature. Um, it's really large. And let's be honest, I mean, unless you hate your party, you're not throwing colossal red dragon miniatures at them very often. So, uh, But yeah, that's why I have more than one. Um, I, th I think it was, like I said, a lot of it was the fact that I didn't have one for the longest time. I found one. It didn't have the flame. Um, and so, so I bought that one. I was hoping I could find a flame, but you never find a flame for them. Uh, I could probably throw resin print one if I wanted to. But Yeah, so that's the answer to that question. Um, another person from one of our Facebook groups saw um, why I posted where I was upset because the Arnold Classic um, Sports Expo had got canceled. And I was going to do uh, the Spartan Expo or the Fitness Challenge. So yeah, I was going to do that. Uh, the Arnold Classic got canceled because of the Corona issues. And so I'm gonna have to wait now until the next Spartan race. Uh, it's kind of sad. Um, yeah, a bunch of other questions, but yeah, I'm, I'm still actively pursuing kind of like fitness in my, in my spare time also. Um, every morning I, I go on a jog, I go on a run. And then normally in the afternoon, I try to do one more jog or run and then at least once throughout the day, I'll use either a weight machine or I'll do kettlebell workouts, things like that. Um, I have some pretty strong fitness goals I want to accomplish. Um, it's not really for weight loss anymore. I mean, I've lost like 200 pounds, um, so I'm not really looking to lose weight anymore. I'm just trying to put on some of the muscle that I used to have when I, I mean, when I used to wrestle in college and that. So it's more um, wanting to stay in the shape I was when I was younger. Um, and just being healthy, active. Um, that way I can eat a little more aggressively, if you will. I like to eat. Um, I'm also a stress eater. So like the other day, my wife and I, we had a bunch of ice cream because we're pretty much stuck in the house, except for those rare occasions we get to leave for something. Which isn't very much during this lockdown quarantine session. So. 
Oh, let's see here. Um, next question I got a couple people asked. Um, do you think it's possible to have too many miniatures? Um, so I know I've, I've been accused several times of being a miniature hoarder, um, having an excessive amount of miniatures. Um, I do think it is possible to have too many. Um, over the years, there's been four or five times I've literally had to go through my miniature collection. And because one thing I'll do sometimes is I'll buy collections off eBay. Like someone has, you know, like a thousand, two thousand miniatures. I'll buy that that whole collection and I'll go through there and I'll take out the ones I want and then the extra ones I'll, I'll sell or I'll sell on lots and stuff like that. It is very easy to lose track of what you have. And then what happens is you wind up like, oh, I've got 200 goblins. Well, I obviously don't need 200 goblins. So um, the other thing you might have saw in the one video, I just had like a couple of these big plastic tubs just full of miniatures. And if you don't keep track of it, you just wind up having, you know, like five gallon buckets full of random miniatures. And then you really have no idea what it is you have in your collection. So it is possible to have too many I try to keep a, a pretty large spreadsheet that I made um, with like by subtypes and then um, categories within that subtype. And then I also put everything in the plastic tubs, which I need to make some more labels, which unfortunately I can't go to the store and get those labels right now. That's not really something essential during this lockdown. Maybe I'll see about ordering those tonight though. Um, but the larger your collection is, I definitely feel the more you have to, more time you have to spend on organizing and making sure that you're not excessively keeping large amounts of the same miniature. Um, I'm one of those people that if I have 10 goblins on the table, um, I'd like all 10 of them to be different. Whether that means if there's a couple of them they're saying, whether that means me paint, you know, maybe their pants on one red or their pants on another one blue or pants on another one brown. I just don't want all of them to look exactly the same. And that's partially my OCD. But that's another easy way for me to customize my minis. Um, the one good thing about using like a resin printer, um, you know, if, if you have like a set of 10 miniatures, you can do a mirror flip so that instead of the guy holding the sword this way, he's holding the sword that way. That way it's the same miniature, but it's, it's mirrored or it's backwards. So it kind of draw, it kind of keeps that illusion of there being completely separate. Plus when you paint them, you can paint them differently. So that's the quick answer to that one. Uh, and then another question we had in the Dwarven Forge group one day, which I'll put a link to down below, down over here, is if you had to choose your dream Dwarven Forge set, what would it be? Um, that one's kind of a tough one. Um, I would love to see a Dwarvenite version of the original Den of Evil set. Um, I think that would be really, really cool. Um, I think that would probably be a very big seller. But if I had to choose my dream set, it would be an ancient Egyptian version of Dwarven Forge in the Dwarven Knight. Um, I know there's been a couple gentlemen on the Dwarven Forge group that have done like a sandstone version. Um, and then Lady Isabel has done um, some, some Hearst Arts sets that kind of get pretty close to Dwarven Forge uh, scale of uh, of detail, of course, she sometimes works with Dwarven Forge, but uh, I've always appreciated her kind of uh, very, very fine quality detail that she does. Um, so I would say a Egyptian Dwarven Forge set. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure how big of a seller that would be. Um, but I think I think it could be done where it's very, very high detailed. Um, I think it could be done where it looks looks visually just stunning. Um, Part of the problem I think you would have would, would be it'd be kind of hard um, to have one of those like Chinese, I hate to say, I hate to say work camps, but some of the settings over there are a little appalling when it comes to how they have workers work. Um, I don't know how much quality work they would be able to initiate something like that. So it'd be one of those things I would probably buy them unpainted and paint them myself. But if they made them in like the sandstone color. Um, like I said, it'd be pretty easy just to do a light dry brush, maybe a little wash, and then pick out like hieroglyphics and stuff like that to get a little wash or add color to. All right, guys, so we have a couple other questions, but this video is going on pretty close to 15 minutes. And I don't want to keep you guys all day long. Um, so I appreciate the questions. Um, there are a couple more, so if I get some free time a little bit later, I will try to answer 
maybe the next uh, five or six questions. And that is all for now, guys. I will see you all later. Hopefully you're all doing well. You're all staying safe. You're all staying healthy and enjoying this time with your family or if you're gaming online, you know, enjoy time with your friends. And I wish you all the best of luck and everyone stay safe out there. Bye-bye.